Have you ever inherited a project and felt completely lost? It can be overwhelming, especially when you're dealing with something as intricate as caching in a Spring Boot application. If that's you, stick around because today we're diving into the default settings of the at cacheable annotation. I totally get it. You want to ensure your application runs efficiently and understanding caching is crucial. Many developers face this challenge when they take over existing code. You're definitely not alone in this. So here's the situation. One user recently asked about the default time to live settings for the at cacheable annotation in their Spring Boot app. They inherited a project that uses at cacheable without specifying a cache manager or TTL. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. Understanding the defaults is essential because it can significantly impact your application's performance. When no TTL is specified, the caching behavior can vary based on the underlying cache manager being used. Let's break this down. And don't go anywhere. By the end of this video, you'll not only know the defaults, but also how to set them explicitly for better control over your caching strategy. To begin addressing the user's question, we need to understand the default behavior of the Spring Cache abstraction when no explicit cache manager or time to live settings are provided. In Spring, if the user does not specify a cache manager, the application will typically use a simple cache manager. This manager does not impose any expiration on cached entries. Next, the user should explicitly define a cache manager in their Spring Boot application. This can be done by configuring a cache manager beam in the application context. Additionally, the user can set a specific time to live for their caches by using the appropriate annotations or configuration properties. This ensures that cache data is refreshed after a certain period. Finally, the user should review the Spring documentation for any updates or additional features related to caching. This will help them stay informed about best practices and new capabilities. Fun fact, did you know that caching can improve application performance by up to 100 times? It's like having a secret weapon in your coding arsenal. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach suggested by another user involves extending the cache manager to define the default time to live, or TTL. They provide a code example that shows how to configure a Redis cache manager with a specified TTL. They also mention the necessary dependency for Spring Boot Redis, which is the Spring Boot Starter Data Redis package. That's it for that response. Let's explore another one. According to another user, the default behavior of the Spring at cacheable annotation is that the cache entries never expire. To set an expiration time, they recommend using Redis cache with a specific property. For example, setting the time to live to 60,000 milliseconds will make the cache expire after one minute. Here's a pro tip. Always document your caching strategy. This will help anyone who inherits your code in the future understand the decisions you've made. And there you have it. Now you know the default TTL settings for at cacheable and how to set them explicitly. Remember, Effective caching can greatly enhance your application's performance. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more tips.